102,465. That's how many airplanes fly every day. The one thing all of these airplanes have in common is they're taking off from airports. And this obviously means millions of people every day going in and out of airports. The one thing those people don't realize is they're being manipulated big time. In fact, almost every part of an airport is designed to manipulate you. I'm Charlie and today we're going to look at 10 tricks airports use to manipulate you. But before we take off, why not subscribe and press the notification bell too. Coming up first, we have signs. One thing airports have a lot of is signs. And all of those signs actually send you subliminal messages. In 80% of all airports, you'll find one of three fonts. These are Helvetica, Fruitica, and Clearview. All of these fonts are sans serif, which means they don't have these lines on the sides of the letters. That's because it's easier for people to read at a distance. This means people can stand far away and they don't have to walk around near signs. The reason they don't want you to walk around airports is to speed things up. And the reason why they speed things up is to increase your dwell time, but we'll get into that in a moment. Also, look closely and you'll see every terminal will have their own font. It will be one of the three that I mentioned before, but different terminals will have different fonts. This is so that if you go into a different terminal, you'll realize everything feels off. This will allow your subconscious to realize you've gone the wrong way and you're no longer in your terminal. You may think you have a great sense of direction, but it's actually the airports playing on your psychology. The signs also may change shape depending on the terminal you're in. For example, one terminal may have rounded signs, while another terminal will have straight signs. Next up we have Tarmac View. Through research, one airport consulting company named Stantec found out something very interesting. People actually find subtle design nudges easier to follow than signs. Of course, people do look out for signs to see where they need to go in an airport. But the best way to get people to where they need to go is through subtle design nudges. That's why at airports, they always make sure you can see the tarmac. Many newer airports have large windows as soon as you leave security. This is so that passengers can see the tarmac immediately. This allows you to get a good sense of direction and know where your terminal is instinctively. Also it calms people down as subconsciously they feel closer to their planes. Many people feel anxious about missing their planes, but if you can see the planes on the tarmac, people feel way more calm. They'll also put these windows in areas where there's lots of aircrafts moving around. This is because it generally gives you the orientation and direction of where you need to be. Next up is carpeting. Have you ever realized that some areas of airports use carpeting? This may seem kind of random as large areas like the shopping areas and the security areas use stone floors. But you'll notice that the gate waiting area is not made of stone, lino, or any other hard surface. So why is it that they splurge on carpets for the gate waiting area? Well, this is a psychological trick to make you more relaxed. It gives the area a more soft and cozy feeling like your living room. This is because at airports, people can get pretty stressed out. They may have a fear of flying, or maybe they're stressed out because they nearly missed their flight. Well, having carpeting actually calms them down. But don't think they're doing that for your benefit. Really, they don't care. The reason they do it is because if you're relaxed, you spend a lot more money. People who are happy and relaxed spend 10% more on duty-free items. This is also the reason why airports put in things like yoga rooms, spas, prayer rooms, and therapy dogs. These are all things to make you chill out and relax and encourage more spending. So don't fall for their tricks and make sure you keep an eye on your wallet and don't go overboard on the spending at airports. Next up is the golden hour. If you're not an airport manager, you may not have heard of the golden hour, but it's literally the thing every airport is thinking about 24 seven. The golden hour is also known as dwell time. This is where passengers are in a trapped market. They've gone through security checks and are now waiting for their airplane. This is usually a time of around 60 minutes, and it's where passengers are feeling very self-indulgent. You likely have a lot of money with you as you've had to exchange it at the Bureau de Change. Not only that, you're about to go on vacation, so you don't mind spending money. And if you have a grueling flight ahead of you, that frappuccino may seem all the more necessary. During the golden hour, they'll want you to spend a lot of time wandering around and shopping. Airports often put the signs saying where your gate is far away from your gate. This ensures you'll have to walk past all of the shops and spend maximum money. Also, studies have found that 40% of people want to avoid human interaction when shopping. 
That's why at airports, self-service kiosks have become the norm. 50% of airports in the USA no longer have workers in stores. Instead, they fully rely on self-checkouts. Next up is conversational security. Nowadays in airports, you're treated like Bin Laden. It seems like there's a CCTV camera in your face at every turn. And if you have an unusual last name or a beard, then you can expect a random security check. But since 2007, the TSA has been trying out a new tactic. The TSA have been pouring $200 million a year into training their agents to talk. That's right, they want to get their security agents more chatty with the passengers. You may think they're just being friendly, but they're likely screening you to check if you're a danger. They actually have a list of 94 signs they need to look out for in passengers. This includes signs of anxiety, fear, lack of eye contact, or sweating. All of this stuff can be an indicator that that person is a danger. If a TSA agent asks you an open-ended question, then they're likely probing you. They're trying to look out for any signs of odd behavior from you, and if they see any, they may check you more thoroughly. So the moral is, do not trust a TSA agent. Next up, we have lighting. Have you ever noticed how light and bright airports are? It kind of makes you want to wear sunglasses even though you're indoors. Well, there's a very good reason for this. New airports have a ton of windows and lighting as well. The reason why is because people walk into shops which have direct access to sunlight much more than if they don't. If shops are closed off or have artificial lighting, then passengers may feel they're too dark and avoid them. This was found out from an extensive study by the University of Buckinghamshire. This is the reason why most shops face the tarmac to get maximum natural lighting. And psychologically, good lighting also boosts a passenger's mood. This will make them more relaxed and make them spend more money. Next up is art. Nowadays, you could confuse an airport for a museum of modern art. It seems like at every turn in an airport, there's some kind of gigantic sculpture. Well, they're not just doing that to make the airport look pretty. In fact, this is a way to make people go where the airport wants them to go. One representative for Vancouver International Airport said this, We like to use things like artwork as a kind of placemaker to create points of reference throughout the airport. They have these large, big sculptures as it's a point of orientation. This makes people get to where they want to go much more quickly and will reduce congestion. This speeds up dilly-dally time and lets airports take more advantage of that golden hour. Also, big artworks create a sense of colour and place. Much like how malls use artwork, it transforms it from a boring place into something where people want to hang out. This means people will spend more time at the airports and spend more time in the shops. 60% of people also say that art in airports creates a more culturally sensitive and authentic experience tied to the location. For example, you might want to have some French sculptures in a French airport. Or maybe some art representing New York in an airport in New York. Next up is single queues. Have you ever looked at a check-in or security line and thought, why is it so long? You may think this would make people stressed out or angry, but the opposite is true. According to studies, a single queue actually lowers people's stress levels. And it also creates a sense of fairness. Psychologically, if we're in one line, we think that another line is going faster than our one, even if it isn't. So if everyone's lined up in one line, we're not concerned about other lines going faster than ours. This is one strange but true piece of psychology that airports play on. It also decreases passenger stress levels, makes them happier, and thus makes them spend more money. Next up we have shops. So we've covered shops extensively in airports. In fact, after learning all this stuff, airports kind of seem like big malls. You may not realize this, but shops are placed very strategically. A lot of the time you'll have to do a big serpentine twisty walk through duty free. There you'll see things like perfumes, giant Toblerones, and gigantic cartons of cigarettes. The reason why there's so many twists and turns is because it allows people to see all the products. In fact, all of the twists and turns actually lead to 60% more sales. Also, shops and restaurants are placed to be very clustered. They don't need to do this, but they do it anyway to evoke a main street feel. This feels like you're in a bustling metropolis environment when really you're just at an airport. This bustling atmosphere makes all the restaurants look very popular, creating the sense of mass appeal. 
Also, have you noticed how all walkways to shops curve to the left in airports? This is done because the majority of people are right-handed. You see, right-handed people will subconsciously look to the right when walking left. That's why they put shops on the right of curved walkways while the walkways curve to the left. And stores also include lots of local items and souvenirs. Go to a London airport and you'll see I Heart London shirts all over the place. And this is true for any airport, they brand items based on the place you are. This leads to a 60% increase in sales, as you can brag to your friends that you went to Nebraska. Check out the poll in the top right corner and you can vote for the most surprising way airports manipulate you. If you want more awesome videos, then check out my second channel, there'll be a link to that on screen in a moment. But as always, thanks for watching, check out some more videos on screen right now, leave a like if you enjoyed and if you haven't already what you're waiting for, subscribe to Top 10s.